Hey, how you doing YouTube? I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about what team may be surprising you next year in the NBA. Now obviously we know teams like Golden State, uh, uh, Los Angeles Lakers, and teams like them, they're obviously going to be good teams next year and they're going to be in the playoff hunt. But I'm going to be going into teams that I think could be a very, very good surprise if you're a fan of that team or just surprises in general. As I mean, the Indiana Pacers were probably surprised the league last year, so I'm just going to be getting into some surprise teams that could have breakout years next year that not many people are expecting to well have breakout years. Alright, so before I really get into the team that I'm going to say that's going to surprise about, I'm going to be going into some honorable mentions and like I'm going to be getting, saying why I didn't pick the team, but also like why I could have picked the team, but like I'm going to be saying like why they mainly weren't the team that I picked that will be surprising the entire thing. So I mean, my first team on the honorable mentions is going to be the Portland Trailblazers and the reason I didn't pick them is like, I would say them, but I mean... I just don't know how to feel about them after the playoffs last year. I mean, they were going in, they were looking to be pretty good, make it at least to the second round, and they got swept by the New Orleans Pelicans 4-0, who they were a higher seed and not only one game, so I mean, the seed didn't really matter that much, but still, I mean, to get swept the way they did, like, they didn't just get swept, but they got dominantly swept. Like, I mean, the game, they lost both games at their home court advantage and then managed to lose another two at New Orleans. I mean, they really just... They just got dominated, and I just can't put them on the list to be like a surprise team when I, they've shown me that they aren't going to be able to play good in prime time. As I mean, like everybody expects them to make the playoffs, but no one expects them to make the second to third round, and that's what I'm looking for in like a surprise team or like a trash team becoming a playoff contender. And now my second team, all my honorable mention, is going to be the Washington Wizards. And now I mean, I was going to say them, like they're on my list for it, like they're the team that I was going to say for a while. But the more I looked into them, I mean, like I don't know, they just. They didn't have enough talent. As Yes, they have Bradley Bill and John Wall, who are great players, very highly talented players. But then when you look at that, their third best player is Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard's not horrible, but still, like, you need that third star. And I don't think Dwight Howard is going to be that good enough piece to give him an extra push to get to the second and maybe third round. Like, I just don't see that happening. Now, since they're in the East, I do think they have a chance to go kind of deep in the playoffs with LeBron being out. But... I mean, that's just me, but I mean, I just don't think they're going to be that surprising. I don't think they added enough talent. Yes, they added Seth Curry, I'm pretty sure. They added a few other pieces. I just don't think that they're going to be talented enough to really, like, compete or anything. You know what I mean? But now my actual team that I think is going to surprise the NBA might be surprising to y'all, the Dallas Mavericks. Now, before you dislike the video, hear me out. All right, so, like, the reason I picked them is because, like, they made some pretty underrated moves in free agency this year. I mean, like... The Dallas Mavericks, they were a very, very, very awful rebounding team last year. And now they added one of the best rebounders slash centers in the entire league in DeAndre Jordan. So, I mean, now the main big guy won't be Dirk Nowitzki. Now it's going to be DeAndre Jordan, which is a huge upgrade. Now, Dirk Nowitzki was a beast at one point, but he is no longer that same player as he's like, 80 years old but DeAndre Jordan he is getting up there in age but it's still a very very elite center and defender and I mean that's another thing they lacked in was rim protection I mean DeAndre Jordan is going to give them rim protection he's a great shot blocker great rebounder great offensive rebounder great point great paint score I mean he can do everything that they did not have last year in the paint he's going to be able to clean up the boards and do all the dirty work which they did not have I'm pretty sure their backup I mean their starting center last year was like Maximilian Kleber? I don't even know. I know it's some something like Maximilian, and that name should tell you all you need to know. Sorry if you're a Mavericks fan and you're like, he's your favorite player. He's not a starting caliber center for the NBA, at least a winning team at least. And I think DeAndre Jordan is obviously a enormous upgrade over him, and they're going to be so much better in the rebounding category. I mean, you have to be able to rebound in order to win games. If you give up a ton of offensive rebounds a game, you're going to lose. If you can't get offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds, you're going to lose. So adding someone like DeAndre Jordan is going to be very, very valuable to them, and it just adds that little bit more star power that they need it. And now my second reason why they're on this, why they're my team is going to be that they have completed their backcourt. I mean, last year, yeah, they had uh, Dennis Smith Jr., but that was pretty much the only good, good player they had in their uh, backcourt. But now, look what they have. They added Luka Doncic from the draft. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that because I'm sure they're going to start both of them at one point, but I, I'm assuming they would move Dennis Smith Jr. to the 
shooting guard? I'm not sure. I don't know who they would move to shooting guard and point guard, but I do assume at one point they're going to start both players. So either they're going to run a two point guard set or move one of them to shooting guard. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm assuming they want to start both. So I mean, they have completed it because this Smith Jr. is probably already one of the most explosive point guards in the entire NBA. I mean, he can take over a game, explosive, extremely athletic, extremely fast, and he has a very very high potential and an upside to him, and I think he has a ton. He has nowhere near his roof yet. And then you take Luka Doncic, who had probably he was the youngest player ever to win an overseas MVP. He had a great overseas career, and I mean he kind of dropped in the draft a little bit for some reason. I think the Mavs might have gotten still with Luka Doncic just because I, I I'm pretty high on him. I mean overseas isn't a joke. Like I mean it's not NBA level obviously, but it's not college it's like a little bit above college level you know what i'm saying so like i do see the um him try kind of transferring into the nba quite well and i think he's going to be better than most rookies out of the gate now rookies might catch up to him but i think it's going to be better than most rookies out of the gate only because he has more like professional experience and i mean i think they were able to complete their backcourt now because in Densmus jr i can see him being a pretty good point guard for him and then putting Luka Doncic out there he's obviously has a high basketball cue can score the ball can do a lot of things well so i think that backcourt is finally going to be like filled and that's something they needed as their offense was ranked the in the bottom three of the NBA last year, which is obviously not good. Now adding someone like Luka Doncic and uh, Dennis Smith Jr. and DeAndre Jordan, who can get you about 15 points just from the paint. Derek Nowitzki can still get you points, and plus you have Harrison Barnes. I mean, your offense should at least go to top 15, top 17 in the NBA. Maybe not average, but like just below average. Like they should be a lot better offense than they were last year. I mean, just because of form what they added, I think. I mean, I think they definitely are going to be very improved. But with their offense completely improving, so is their defense. As Like I said, DeAndre Jordan, good defender. Luka Doncic, high basketball IQ. Dennis Smith Jr. has a chance to be a very good defender. Uh, Harrison Barnes is a pretty smart player. Dirk Nowitzki, he's getting too old to the point to where like you can't expect him to play lockdown defense or anything, and he's just not that great of a defender anymore. But I mean, he's a very good veteran, you know, high basketball IQ veteran. Maybe he can coach up some players. I don't know. And maybe he can be smart I, I don't know he's going to be there so yeah but I mean their starting five looks a lot better than did last year and I just think all around that they did get a lot better and they will be a playoff contender in this league but I thought you guys and by the way I did forget to say this in the beginning of the video but I actually got this video idea from a comment in section below if I can find the screenshot or like find the comment I'll put it right here so if you're not seeing anything well because I was lazy and couldn't find it but if you are seeing it well shout out to you forgot your name but shout out to you for commenting this video and like i said i mean comment below any video ideas you have me want to make me make because like it is kind of hard to come up with daily video ideas when literally nothing goes on in the nba like literally when Kwai, like there was rumors about him going to see them with open mind i jumped on that shit all right like i needed an idea and it was like and like god just like here have it and i was like ah oh. like you know like it's crazy i mean once the nba season gets back in i'm sure it's gonna be a lot easier to start coming up with video ideas it's not like it's bad i mean it's not like i'm struggling and like stressed out about it it's just like I, I like to have video ideas the day before before like to be able to schedule a video for tomorrow and then what I write down is for tomorrow's video and that's today's we're not to stress and then right yeah, yeah it's a big process if you get behind it's very hard to catch back up if you get behind so I mean yeah comment below any video ideas you have for me in the comment section below if you'd like me at any point like button and subscribe button it would literally mean the road to me we're at 534 subscribers can't thank you enough for that I mean 534 people that's a lot of people if we can, so I'm not saying we will, and I'm not, I wouldn't even be mad if we didn't, because we already crushed the goal of 300 subs. But if we can somehow hit 600 subs before the end of the year, and that's my goal now to hit 600 subs before the end of the year, I mean, that would mean the world to me, and I couldn't have thanked y'all enough. And I mean, I'm, even if you don't do it, I still love y'all. Y'all are still my family to me. And I hope you have a blessed day, because I have a blessed day, so y'all need to have a blessed day. See you tomorrow's video. Goodbye. Boo! <laughs>